we want to find the equation of the line that is the intersection of the planes x plus 2y minus 4z equals 16 and 2x minus y plus 3z equals 6. Looking at our notes below on the standard equation of a plane, notice how the coefficients of x, y, and z, which are a, b, and c, give us the component form of a normal vector to the plane. So looking at this first equation, a normal vector to this plane, which we'll call vector n sub 1, would have components 1, comma 2, comma negative 4. Looking at the second equation, a normal vector, we'll call it vector n sub 2, would have components 2, comma negative 1, comma 3. And we'll need these vectors in order to find the equation of the line of intersection. Now looking at our notes below on the parametric equations of a line in space, to write the equations of a line in space, we need two things. We need a point on the line, which would be the point x sub 0 comma y sub 0 comma z sub 0. And we also need the direction vector, vector v, with components a comma b comma c. To better understand how to approach this, let's look at this graphically. Here we have the graph of the two planes. Notice how the yellow vector is normal to the yellow plane, and this light blue vector is normal to the light blue plane. And if we find the cross product of these two normal vectors, it gives us this gray vector, which is actually the directional vector of the blue line, which is the intersection of the two planes. So we can find the directional vector of the line by determining the cross product of the two normal vectors to the two planes. And then we'll have to algebraically find one point that is on both planes, which would also be on the line of intersection. But let's first determine the directional vector for the line of intersection by determining the cross product of these two normal vectors. And let's do this on the next slide. So we'll set this up as a three by three determinant where the first row will be the unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row will be the components of vector n sub one. So we have one, two, negative four. The third row will be the components from vector n sub two, which are two, negative one, three. Let's go ahead and evaluate this using the expansion by minors method. To determine the elements for this first two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the i vector. So we eliminate the first row and the first column. So the elements are two, negative four, negative one, three. For the next two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the j vector. So we eliminate row one, column two. So the elements are one, negative four, two, three. And for the third determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the k vector. So we eliminate row one, column three. So we have one, two, two, negative one. And now to evaluate each two by two determinant, we'll find this product minus this product. Let's write this in component form. So the x component is going to be six minus four, which is two. Here we have three minus negative eight, which becomes three plus eight or 11, because the minus here, the y component is negative 11. And the z component is going to be negative one minus four, which is negative five. So this is the cross product of the two normal vectors, which gives us a directional vector of the line of intersection. So going back to our first slide, Let's write v, the directional vector, has components two comma negative 11 comma negative five. Let's go ahead and highlight this. And now let's work on determining a point that is going to be on both planes. Remember, any point will do as long as it's on both planes. And we'll find this point algebraically. What we're going to do first is pick a value for x, y, or z as a constant. Let's go ahead and let x equal zero. There has to be one point on both planes where the x-coordinate would be zero. And when x is zero, notice how this first equation would be 2y minus 4z equals 16. And the second equation, again, if x is zero, would be negative y plus 3z equals six. Again, we could pick any constant value for x, y, or z, but by selecting x equals zero, we're just saying, there must be one point on both planes where the x-coordinate is zero, which would give us these two equations, which we solve as a system of equations, 
in order to find the point on both planes where the x-coordinate is zero. Solving this as a system, let's go ahead and multiply this second equation by two. So we'll leave the first equation the same, 2y minus 4z equals 16, and here we'd have negative 2y plus 6z equals 12. Now let's go ahead and add these two equations together. So this would be 0, negative 4z plus 6z is 2z. So we have 2z equals 16 plus 12 is 28. Dividing both sides by 2, we have z equals 14. So when x is 0, we know z equals 14. And now we need to find what y would be by substituting z equals 14 into one of these two equations here. Let's go ahead and use this equation here to substitute 14 for z. That would give us negative y plus 3 times 14 equals 6. So negative y plus 42 equals 6. Subtracting 42 on both sides, we get negative y equals negative 36. So y equals 36. So we found that the point on both planes when x equals 0 is when y must be 36 and z equals 14. So this would be the point that is on the line of intersection of the two planes. So again, going back to our first slide, we now know a point on the line of intersection. It would have coordinates 0, 36, 14. And now we have all the information we need in order to find the equation of the line that is the intersection of these two planes. We know a, b, and c are 2, negative 11, and negative 5, and x sub 0 is 0, y sub 0 is 36, and z sub 0 is 14. So the parametric equations for the line of intersection would be x of t equals 0 plus 2t, or just 2t, y of t is equal to 36 minus 11t, and z of t is equal to 14 minus 5t. Of course, we could also write this line as a vector value function, where r of t would have an x component of 2t, a y component of 36 minus 11t, and a z component of 14 minus 5t. So depending on how you're asked to write the equation, it could be as parametric equations or as a vector valued function. But probably the most common way would be to write the line as a set of parametric equations shown here. But again, it could also be expressed here as a vector valued function. Going back to our graph one last time, we just found the equation of this blue line here. I hope you found this helpful.